Oh, hello. So today, I want to look at something a bit different. So I want, we're looking at the Microsoft Surface Snapdragon X Elite laptop, which is um, the model I've got here is the top of the range, 32 gigabytes of RAM, one terabyte hard drive, and the top of the range Snapdragon X Elite CPU. So I've been using this laptop over the past month as a content creator's laptop to find out if the new Snapdragon CPU can compete with Apple M series CPU. And it can to a certain extent, and I will leave that to the end of the review to reveal all, but I thought we'd just get into this um, and start off. So I'm going to make two videos on this because I think doing it in one video is not going to work. So we're going to do the first video is we're going to go over um, using this laptop as a daily, daily laptop for someone who's not doing a lot of content creation work, so sort of office-based work, spreadsheets, photo editing, a bit of light photo editing, light video editing, and just a general portable laptop like you'd use a MacBook Air for. And then I'm going to go over it in a second review for someone who'd use it with DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, all those big content creation sort of software that I use and whether it can handle those features and whether it's ready for the task. Because this laptop cost me £2,000, so it's definitely not a cheap machine. Um, so in theory, it's very light. It's one of the lightest, you know, it's a pretty light laptop. It's pretty light, much like the MacBook Air. Uh, with better connectivity, has a great screen. So let's get into this review and find out my thoughts after a month long using this um, for office-based, desk-based use and um, as just a general productivity powerhouse. So as mentioned, let's get into the um, initial uh, review and the design of this uh, machine and whether I think the build quality is up to, up to Microsoft standard, Surface standards, because we've had iffy build quality over the years, let's be honest with the Surface series, but I think we're now in a new league of uh, the Surface, um, Microsoft Surface laptop. And I have tried a few out in the past and not been that impressed with them. So, and to be honest, this has impressed me the most out of any machines I've tried so far. So as I mentioned, I, this is the top of the range one, one terabyte um, hard drive and 32 gigabytes of RAM. It has a uh, magnesium based alloy chassis. So it's really quite light, um, even for the amount of power under the hood and it has a decent sized battery in it. So Microsoft are claiming 22 hours of battery life. So we'll get over that later on, whether I actually found that in real testing. Um, the display is really nice. So it's a over full HD screen. So it's nearly, I think it's about 3K. Just a standard LCD screen, so nothing um, on the OLED side of things or mini LED screen like the uh, MacBook Pros. But it looks great. It's a great screen. It's a touch screen, so you can do um, you can maneuver it. You can do what you want with the screen. Um, to be honest, I'm not a big fan of touch screens in laptops, uh, in standard laptop configuration, because the screen only goes back that far, so you can't really write on it with a pen. Um, you can't really do much with it. Uh, but I suppose it's a nice to have feature that uh, Microsoft have included. So. Not something that I think is necessary, but it's just nice to have. Uh, nice big trackpad here, which is really easy to use. And I did have some problems with it uh, earlier on when I was charging up on a third-party charger, so it wouldn't actually charge up. It wouldn't actually, the trackpad wouldn't work when I was charging up. It kept stopping, so I don't know if that's a driver problem or a problem with the machine I've got. I need to talk to Microsoft about that, but that was one issue I had, so just bear that in mind. But using the Microsoft uh, charger that came in the box, it's all been fine. Keyboard's great. I love the keyboard for typing on. Um, I've been using that now as my main sort of word processing machine for probably the past month, and it's been really nice to use. I really enjoyed typing on it and really enjoyed writing on it. No problems at all there from the keyboard perspective. Um, and the trackpad is really good when it works fine. So it, when it's using it and it's working fine, it's a great trackpad. Lots of haptic feedback and lots of options. You can customize it in the menus here. Um, so build quality wise, the hinges on the laptop feel excellent and it's really nice and thin and light to carry around for the amount of power. So this is the 15 inch model I've got here. There is a 13.8 inch model as well. Uh, the 15 inch one is slightly more powerful um, just in terms of how the thermal efficiency works in it and the memory, I think. But the actual 13 point inch model that you can get in the Snapdragon X plus CPU, which is a lower down spec, which may actually... I, I've ordered, I've ordered one to try, to want to try the lower down spec CPU to compare to the X Elite, see how it, how it varies in performance. So I'll let you know as soon as I get hold of that and try it out. Um, so now let's move on to uh, the specifications in the laptop and what I've been using it for over the past um, month. 
So as mentioned, it's got a 32 gigabytes of RAM and it's fast RAM, so it's DDR5 RAM, which may not mean a lot to people, but it is really quick, which means it's uh, one of the highest speed ones. So this is um, uh, now got the Snapdragon X Elite CPU in it. So Microsoft have moved away from Intel on this lineup and they've released a first-based ARM-based Surface laptop. So what do we mean by ARM? So a lot of people are confused by this. Like, what does it mean? So ARM architecture is what uh, Apple use on their laptops. It's very similar. So you've got their own, um, so you've got a CPU with the memory built into the CPU and the GPU and everything all built into one single package. So it should therefore offer greater efficiency, uh, more battery life and uh, the similar sorts of power and less heat produced and fast start at times, fast load at times, because the memory doesn't have to talk to the CPU uh, over the diff longer distances without getting into too much de technical detail, because it's quite technical. Basically, it's just a new generation of CPU architecture that Microsoft are moving towards to try and take on Apple. So has it worked? So I think from an office productivity point of view, it definitely has. And this is a great laptop. Start at times are greatly reduced. Uh, battery life of office works lasting the quoted time, 22 hours. I got about 12 hours out of it, probably for office-based use. So it's probably half that. But maybe if you dim the screen right down, you probably couldn't get that. It gives off no heat whatsoever when you do doing office-based work or even light photo editing, anything like that. It runs really, really well. So I think Microsoft have hit the nail on the head as a general productivity machine. I think this is a great laptop. Um, it really does take on the MacBook Air in terms of the M3 processor because I've got one of those as well and I started off doing video editing on the M3 for my first content which I made a few months ago and I had real problems with the overheating issue on the MacBook Air M3 because it doesn't have a fan so when I do my video review when I do my um, content creation view review on this laptop in the next video I will talk about that then but just let you know that this does have a fan in it and it really does work with the cooling and it never overheats so it's a great Microsoft have designed the product really well they've kept it nice and thin but also built in a fan so no problems like the Asus one I had uh, with the AMD CPU a few uh, months ago with the overheating. This is just just works. It just works great, great. Um, everything about it for performance wise, I've had no problems with it whatsoever in terms of productivity office work. There was a few issues with DaVinci Resolve and the video side of things, which we'll talk about in the next video. So as I mentioned, you've got a built-in GPU on this, so it's not really a gaming laptop. So if you plan to do any gaming on it, don't because it doesn't run games very well. It will run some games relatively okay, like. The GPU is not too bad on it, especially in the top of the line form in the Snapdragon X Elite, but it's not really a gamer's laptop. So if you're looking for a gamer's laptop, look elsewhere. This is aimed at the Max, at the Apple MacBook Air M3. This is its main competition and maybe the low base model and uh, pro models, but it really is look, aimed at those markets like the business market. And they do some great accessories um, in clip for this Surface, which I picked up. So they've got a nice Arc mouse here which is really nice. I really enjoyed using this and it folds flat like that. So that it fits in perfectly with the Surface design. And they've got a Thunderbolt 4 dock there, which I'm using, which is great. All of this I purchased from my own money, so I'm not sponsored by Microsoft in any way. Um, and the Thunderbolt 4 dock is one of the best docks I've used. Not surprisingly, because it's made by Microsoft, it never overheats. Um, so the laptop charges at full night. I think it charges at about eight to six watts on the with the dock there. It charges really quickly. It's got enormous battery in it, so it does last a relatively long time for the size of the screen. So I've not tried the 13.8 inch model, so I don't know how long that would last, but I'm guessing a bit less time because it's a smaller chassis. So this does come in a few different colors. So I got this in the black. I think you can get it in blue, silver, and other ones, but uh, they're not in stock at the time. So I don't know if they stopped doing them. Or, but in the 13 inch model, they were in stock. So have a look at that. So if you want the 13 inch model for the smaller chassis and the smaller screen, which I think may appeal to a lot of people who are traveling, you still get a 13.8 inch screen, so it's pretty good. Um, as I say, you can look at the lower down CPU. So I've not tried that CPU. I don't know how it performs, but I've heard it's pretty good for productivity work. So I'd probably only go for the Snapdragon X Elite if you plan to do any light video editing, sort of photo editing on it and a bit of light gaming. So I'll give you just a bit more power. So that covers pretty much the specifications on the machine. Um, so let's sort of talk about how I found this in the real world and how I found using it uh, out about every day in my job. So one thing I do want to cover before we get into the sort of real world use is the connectivity options on this laptop because it's better than the MacBook Air in a lot of ways. Um, so you have two Thunderbolt 4 USB-C ports on the side. So nice high speed ports, a USB-A port here and the headphone microphone jack. And on, on the other side, a mini SD card reader, which is only on the 15 inch model. So to be honest, I'm not really a big fan of the mini SD card reader because I've not really found a use for it because I use full-size SD card readers in the studio, so I don't really see the point, but I suppose it's nice to have. Maybe if you're using it on a, with a game, 
with something that use micro SD cards, you could plug it straight in, or maybe you can get an adapter. I've not looked into it, so not really found use for it at the moment, but it is there if you need it. And it's nice to have full array of ports here because I've not actually found I need a dock when I'm out and about because I've got a USB A port for want to plug in a Logitech mouse, for example, that's not Bluetooth. It's just really nice to have. So on the MacBook Air, you only get two USB um, Thunderbolt 3 ports, I think it is. So it is a bit less in terms of connectivity wire than the MagSafe charging port here. So Microsoft have got something very similar here. They do a uh, their own sort of MagSafe charging, which is very similar to Apple, the way it works. So if you fall over the cable, it won't drag the whole laptop off the table with you like that. So nice to have, uh, and I think it works pretty well. So have I found this in my daily use for as a general purpose office laptop? So as I've mentioned, I really enjoy using it. The keyboard's great to type on. Uh, it's got plenty of memory. It's got plenty of hard drive space. Microsoft Word runs really well. Windows just runs really well on this ARM laptop. So I was a bit skeptical at first. I thought I've I've tried a lot of use Intel laptops, uh, other jobs I've used. I've you know I've tried lots of different. I've used AMD CPUs and Windows has always run. Been a bit more laggy, laggy than Mac OS for me, but this is the first time I've really enjoyed using Windows. So I think it's opened up a whole new lease of life of Windows on this laptop because of the ARM architecture. It's just so much quicker. Like the startup times are a lot quicker. Apps just load instantaneously. So if you just click on the screen here, look and load up something like the Microsoft Store, it just loads so fast. Like it, you know, just everything just runs really, really well. It just runs like work. It just generally runs really really well so that's just something i've really i've noticed over the time with it and something i want to highlight is that general everyday performance on this laptop is fantastic like it's easily mac beating and that's what apple um that's what microsoft were going for with the surface and i think they've hit the nail on the head so as a general office product productivity machine you can't really beat it alongside the macbook air it's as good as the macbook air if not a bit better So let's just touch on price because the price on this laptop is it's not a cheap machine look let's face it i paid two thousand pounds for this top of the range 15 inch model and that is the topping out one terabyte of hard drive uh 32 gigabytes of ram and the snapdragon x elite full power cpu so it starts at about 1200 pounds i think or 1000 pounds for the 13.8 inch with the snapdragon x plus um, 16 gigabytes of ram and a 512 or might be even a 256 gigabyte hard drive so very similar to the apple lineup um, so it probably is a bit more expensive than a MacBook Air actually, but has been out. MacBook Air has been out longer. So my MacBook Air, 16 gig of RAM with a 512 terabyte hard drive, sorry, 512 gigabyte hard drive and the M3 series chip. So I paid a thousand, one thousand seven hundred pounds for that last year. Pricing wise, I don't think there's a big difference here. It's just whichever one you prefer. So if you prefer Windows, you've got this as an option, and it's nice to have an ARM option you can go to. Uh, there, are, there are some caveats. So let's go with some caveats with the ARM architecture on Windows um, compared to sort of Apple's side of things. So not all software is yet available supporting ARM architecture. So most software has been written for Intel and AMD CPUs, which we call the x86 architecture, which is where it's traditionally been an Intel AMD CPU running on a uh, with RAM separately and the hard drive all manufactured, manufactured separately in the motherboard. You know, people who have built PCs will know what I'm talking about. So I used to build them myself and it was all separate components. And the reason why ARM works so much better and so much quicker is because the manufacturer is all being made, the CPU is all being made by one manufacturer. So Snapdragon has condensed it all down onto this one chip on, and, it, and it works, it's really quick. But it does mean that manufacturers, software manufacturers are having to write new software for the uh, new architecture. So for example, uh, DaVinci Resolve have brought out their own version of ARM, which runs really well on the Snapdragon, and I'll go over that in the video creators video. Um, Microsoft Word, all the Microsoft products are all ARM based and they run really well. But there's some software that still emulates, so there might be some Adobe products that don't run properly on ARM yet. So if you, when you download them, it'll pop up saying this software doesn't support ARM, uh, it will emulate the software to run it. So what emulate means is it runs on Microsoft sort of, it's called Prism, I think it is, when the background, so they run it as if it is on, on the normal Windows, so it tricks the software into thinking it's running on an Intel CPU, which is like another layer, so you end up with a bit of de a degrading in performance, and it particularly hits video editing software hard. So I tried Adobe Premiere Pro, and that really did not run very well on this at all, but they are working on an ARM version, so that's just another story. But uh, Lightroom and Photoshop work really well on this because they've both got ARM versions on it. So it's just, it's just a matter of just check before you buy that um, any software, that particular software that you use for your job doesn't require a particular um, 
you know, if it requires a particular piece of software, just check it's available on ARM before you buy it because it might not be and it might just impact your overall use and enjoyment of the laptop. That's just one caveat with it. That's the major problem. But as it ARM increases, because Asus are bringing out new laptops all the time, uh, Samsung are bringing out, you know, it's going to go keep, I think Windows ARM is going to be the future to compete with Apple. You know, we're going to see normal support in a few years, a year or give it a year or two, and it will have full software support across the board. Even maybe in six months' time, will be fully supported. So don't worry too much about it. It's just something to be wary of at the moment. So let's wrap this up then in terms of an office productivity machine and general workhorse for your everyday uh, office-based tasks and um, out and about on the road and whether you should buy one over the MacBook Air M3 or, you know, and I think yes is the answer. I think this can be an alternative to the MacBook Air M3. So if you're not bothered about Mac OS, you're used to Windows, look at this laptop. It's great. You'll have no problems with it at all. You really enjoy using it. Just make sure your software runs on it. But as an office-based tool it's great apps and everything load up so quickly uh, it starts up times are great it's got a good battery life and it's easy to carry around in your bags it's thin and light and it's much cooler and runs faster than um intel and amd based laptops um if you're used to mac os obviously look at the Mac at macbook air because that is being refreshed soon with the m4 chip in it so this might all change because the m4 chip is a real workhorse real power house as i found out during my testing this advice may all change later on but as an alternative to the macbook air m3 i think it's a good alternative and if you want a windows alternative this is the one to look at the surface series 7 is really good so Check it out. Try and use it in the shop if you're not sure about, about it yet. Um, have a play around with one. But I think you'll be impressed if you do buy one. So thanks for watching. Uh, and check out my, if you want to look learn about using it, how I found it on DaVinci Resolve, um, I'll do a video on that next. And we'll get that live as soon as possible to show you how I found it as my main content creation machine. So thanks again for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit that subscribe button. It makes the world of difference. Thank you.